Hello, my name is Caroline Barry and I'm a librarian in Cobegan Library. Hello, my name is Manus Lenehan, I'm also a librarian here in, here in Cobegan. And our heads are on the block here. Well, we're not about to be executed, but this very famous piece of wood is kept in Cobegan Library. And why, you might ask? Why, Manus? Because um, there's these fascinating carvings on them. This tree was chopped down in the 50s and they found these carvings when they cut the tree open. Wow, so it's a carving of a church. Why would there be a carving of a church inside a piece of wood? Well, the carving in a church part, they reckon it could be the boundary between two monasteries or something, and they do have the records for the monasteries. But why it's inside the tree, that's another mystery. I love a mystery. So just to go back, Henry VIII shut down all the churches mm. and this could have been abandoned. We think this might have been a sign. How did it grow inside the tree, Manus? One of the theories is that there was a fissure, it was carved inside of a fissure, and then the tree grew around that, gradually closing it up. Okay, and I have... Uh, so I'm Gary Dempsey from Digital Heritage Age. Um, I'm an archaeologist specialising in digital recording. And this is... I'm John Sheehan from the Archaeology Department in UCC. Uh, my expertise is in Vikings, that sort of thing. <laughs> so we're uh, recording as part of a project to record cross slabs uh, across the kind of Clonic Noise hinterland and, and look at that area. So we're doing workshops here in Athlone today, but we saw your lovely uh, wooden unreal? carvings, so these amazing wooden carvings that seem to be carved on the inside of the same That was split log. open. Yeah. That's the, the thing. They, they were chopping this tree up for firewood. They couldn't chop it up. They finally got the axe in and chopped it and it split down the middle and look what it revealed. About 40 years ago. I think in 1950s. 50s? Yeah, okay. 1950s. So we were just discussing there a second. We think it, it looks like it could be folk art. Um, so so possibly something that was carved and then the story attributes itself to it afterwards. Um, but I think there's some there, there's some kind of medieval hints to us, or they might have been looking at early images or yeah. early pictures. They were influenced by yeah. earlier representations. But a lot of folk art carving is ecclesiastical, it's related yes. to the church. Yeah. And you have three crosses here and what seems to be the gable view of a church. So it's ecclesiastical too, which ties in with a lot of the other folk art that you see around Ireland. And of course the tree would have grown on estates where there were, I think, 10th, 12th century monastic settlements. Okay. So it's boundary land area. One was the Abbey by the River. I mean, how beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's a lovely piece and it's, it's an interesting piece to have. I think it's are the two carvings ever so slightly different on this. I so. don't think so. I think it's one is the reverse of the other. It literally split. Oh, it is, yeah. When you lift but it up, you can you... see the reverse there. Yeah, when they're separated, pieces of one side were left in the other and vice yes. versa. Yes. So. When you scan it today, Gary, it's yes. going, obviously it's going to reveal a lot of detail that we can't see now with the naked eye. Yeah, so the, the nice thing about the scan is we use a, a, a laser scanner that uses light waves and cameras and it records us and if anyone's ever used a, an xbox connect that's literally what we're using right. um, that type of technology two cameras and one flashing light and it can record a room or can record an object in 3d um, so we obviously have a very high-end version of the connect but we can yeah. do that and what you can actually start to see then is when we process that you'll start to see tool marks well, what I'm keen on seeing is, is this centerpiece a Christ figure on a cross? That's what I'm wondering okay. with the RK. Now, that's just the art history college student. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong, but it just... And then I wondered with the initials, if it was earlier, would they be Latin or RK, Rex some another, or... What yeah. K? There would be any Ks. Latin. I don't even know if there's a K in it. No, I think if it's or a K, it could just be the person. The person's name okay. yeah. is laser scanning. When I press play here, um, this should start to record. And then I'll just turn this around. I'll put that carving side face up and do a scan just at the top of us. So the most detail you're going to record 
is the carved surface. And here you can begin to see the carving on the wood. Um, so yeah, it's hard to tell if it is a figure in the middle or not. Yeah. Still. Okay. But we can run what we call a process called ambient illusion, which is basically shadow lighting. Okay. So we make a black and white image of this. Um, again, we just use another piece of software to run that through and it will take what we call the texture or the color and it will make a black and white version. And that's generally for computer games to tell you where shadows are, okay. but we use it in archeology span to actually show up the detail. Brilliant.